Hey guys, Skater here. In my last Bed Wars 1v1 tips and tricks video, it got enormous support and you guys absolutely loved it. So I thought, how about I make a part 2 with the tips and tricks I've accumulated since then? So the, for the first part of this tutorial, I'm going to be going over my own personal strategies for every single map. I'm not going to be going over the seasonal maps or like the newer maps like, you know, like Babylon or, you know, other maps like that. Um, mainly because nobody really 1v1s on like Babylon and like the newer maps because, I don't know, they're just, they're just not really like adopted into like the tournament rules yet. In the future they might be, um, you know, I might make a part 3 with that in there, but for now I'm just going to do like the OG maps, you know, like Glacier, Amazon... You know, like the, the maps that are like classically in the, you know, in solo tournaments. So the first map I'm going to be going over is Playground, and it was one of the maps that was added back to the map rotation recently. Since the rush is about 64 blocks, I tend to like to bridge from the top of the island with 80 blocks. Uh, if you don't know, you, just to make it easier, 80 blocks is a stack and 16 blocks. reason for that is you can make it with 64, but I like taking the extra blocks just in case you know, I need to stack up or something. Or block clutch and stuff, you know, you want to have. Having the extra blocks is always nice. For orchestra, I bring 48 blocks, 16 ladders, and I one stack from the top. Uh, and that way I can like TNT jump and ladder clutch. Just be aware that some people might want to like, some people like to TNT jump from like the midsection area. Uh, and that can be problematic. So I would suggest going back for that because if they TNT jump, it likely, it likely means that they don't have any more blocks. They don't have that many blocks on them. So, um, yeah, you might have to go back to save your bed, which is kind of annoying, but, um, that's my strat for orchestra, and it works most of the time. Next up is Airshow, and Airshow is actually my favorite map for regular Bedwars games, but it's my least favorite out of this list of Bedwars maps for Bedwars 1v1s, just because of how far the islands are between each other. What I generally like to do on this map is rush diamonds with 32 blocks as soon as i get like eight iron i just rush with 32 blocks get some diamonds usually protection uh and if they're side rushing which most people usually like to go through diamond gen and then rush like through the balloons rather than side rushing because side rushing takes forever um however if they do side rush um scorpion bridge and try to use a kb stick um, for these maps that have like really high build heights uh scorpion is going to be really really dominant um, and having a KB stick is just, you know, KB sticks are really, really overpowered in Bed Wars. On Solus, I like to bring 64 blocks, TNT, and one stack. Water is also really, really good on this map. Um, the reason I don't buy ladders on this map is because if you ladder clutch on, like, the side of it, you're in, like, a really vulnerable position because, it, you know, you ladder clutch there, right? And you get back up and you're, auto, you know, automatically on the edge there. And then if you die, then your opponent can rush you. And it's probably my worst map because of that, because I like scorpioning and then using ladders. So it's taken me a while to find a good strategy, but that's generally what I like to do. Um, one stacking fast is really pertinent on this map. So if you can't one stack fast, it's probably going to be a difficult map for you. Amazon. Uh, I usually take 48 blocks, 16 ladders, uh, and TNT. Now, you can Scorpion or 1-stack on this map. Um, depends on how aggressive you want to play it. If you really think that you can out-PVP your opponent, I would go with Scorpion because that gives you a chance to like, make a platform and then you can PVP your opponent. Um, however, if you think that you're probably equal in PvP or you don't trust your PvP skills against that person, try one stacking because that goes a little bit more aggressively um, and you can try to maybe push them when they're not ready to fight. Um, it just depends on your play style and you know what you want to do. Next up is Waterfall, and for this map, I like rushing with 64 blocks, 16 ladders, TNT, and I Scorpion Bridge. Um, I Scorpion Bridge because the build height is really, really high. Scorpion is usually pretty good for high build limit maps. Um, it's a really good idea to restrict mid because mid on this map is really overpowered. You could win the game, win the game, like, probably half of the time if you literally just mid-rushed and forgot about your bed completely because there's just so many places to hide in that mid and it's just really hard to find you. So try to restrict mid as much as you can, especially if you break your opponent's bed and die. They're likely going to go mid, um... If they go diamonds, try to grab, like, two emeralds. Like, if they're going diamonds, try to grab two emeralds and bring them back. 
um, and maybe that'll put you at a good advantage. Controlling mid on this map is like really, really important. If you don't control mid, you can lose the game pretty easily. And it's it's also if you're on the other side of things and your bed is broken, do not give up on this map because this is probably the easiest map in my opinion to clutch on. Um, there's just there's just so many places to hide, um, and you can juke out your opponent pretty easily. Next up is Hollow, which is my second favorite Bed Wars 1v1 map. I bring 48 blocks, 16 ladders, TNT, and a Scorpion Bridge. Um, make sure if you break your opponent's bed that you control diamonds immediately. Emeralds aren't as like close to the base, so it's not that much of an as much of an issue compared to like on Waterfall. But it is it is it is important to make sure that your you know opponent doesn't get like a bunch of M's, but Controlling the diamond gen is usually more important. Um, controlling a diamond gen on hollow is, is really important. You should definitely watch out for that. Next up is Glacier. I bring 48 blocks, 16 ladders, TNT, and a scorpion bridge. Same strat as hollow. Uh, on, on this map uh, also, it's basically a, a, a carbon copy of hollow. Controlling diamonds is very, very important on this map. Glacier is actually my favorite map. Um, I don't know, it might be because Scorpion is, like, really overpowered on this map, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, Scorpion is really good on this map, uh, um, if you, if you're good at PvP, um, you know, like, PvPing on a platform, then you're probably gonna do really well on this map, um, because it's a lot of platform PvP, so yeah, that's Glacier, just make sure your opponent, uh, like, doesn't get too many diamonds, because even if your opponent doesn't get any, any emeralds at all, it, it's pretty easy to find yourself, you know, with no upgrades against Pro 2 and Sharpness. So just make sure that scenario doesn't happen to you. Next up is Pernicious. And I really like this map. And I actually have two different strategies for this map, which is kind of unique to, like, this entire list. Um, I usually bring 64 blocks, 16 ladders, TNT, and a Scorpion Bridge for one of the strategies. You know, a, fair, a fairly uh, basic layout. Uh, however, my other strategy is very unique. I like to buy Endstone, Water, 32 Blocks, and I Scorpion Bridge. So, why is this overpowered? Because on Pernicious, right, the generator is so fast that if you hold pressure for a while and then die, it's possible that you'll have 48 iron in your generator, and that's enough for a fireball in 32 blocks, which I usually decide to get a fireball in 32 blocks whenever I have that much iron in my generator. And if you have endstone, endstone isn't broken by fireballs, so that's really, really nice. And also, conversely, if your opponent is, like, camping on top of your base you can fireball jump on top of your bed and they will not expect it at all because in any other scenario you can't fireball on top of you know fireball jump on top of your bed because it'll expose it and they can just jump down and break it but um some of them some sometimes your opponent not real may not realize that oh they have end stone you know they can fireball jump and that can help you get out of a lot of sticky situations Next up is Zarzul, and I like bringing 96 blocks, 16 ladders, a KB stick, and a double wool defense, and a scorpion bridge. So that was a lot of information. Um, sorry, it was a little jumbled. But basically, I defend with two layers of wool. So um, as soon as I get 32 blocks, I go ahead and put a double wool defense. This generator is really, really fast. Uh, the build height is also sky high on this map, and 98 blocks, if you're wondering, is a stack and 32 blocks. KB sticks on this map are absolutely broken because the build height is so high basically it, it's just you know like a just a height limit battle the entire time uh if you're more of a classic pvp'er you might not be as good at this map but if you're like a bridge player then you might excel at this map a lot because it's you know it's it's not as much um like flat pvp it's more um bridge pvp oriented so yeah zarzul is uh zarzul is a really interesting map uh, to play on just the generator is super super fast it's insane next up is crypt which was another map that was added back thank goodness i love crypt for this i usually go red gray so that's what i'm going to be doing for this because it's a little bit closer red blue on the map is just like really far and it's kind of annoying to bridge that far so in this scenario i'll i usually like to bridge with 64 blocks tnt and i one stack zigzag so if you don't know what i mean by one stack zigzag is like let's say like this is your island that you're starting off of and then your opponent's base is over here because we're doing like the diagonal scenario right so i like to start off by doing this right 
like one stack a little bit and then I'll go like this and I'll change direction and then I'll go back like this and I'll do it again you see what I mean so it's like a one stack zigzag and then of course I bring TNT for speedway uh, it's red blue that's generally how it's played uh, I bring 48 blocks 16 ladders TNT and I one stack um, because the build height is so short on this map, I like to one stack because Scorpion is just doesn't work that well for low build height maps. If you're a really, really good PvPer, this is a map that you'll excel in because there will be a lot of platforms usually that you can PvP on. Uh, and it's there's not a whole lot of bridge fighting. Uh, it's mostly defensive or um, just like platform fighting. That's usually how the game goes so yeah if you're a really good pvp -er, then this is going to be a map that you're really good at lotus this is also a map that was added back after not being in the rotation for a long time on lotus i like to bring 64 blocks tnt and i one stack uh the build height is insanely high on lotus um so you could try to scorpion but because the islands are so far apart I wouldn't suggest that. Maybe you can like halfway scorpion so you can get some like vertical advantage, but usually I just one stack. Um, and generally I can get a little bit of a build height advantage. Of course, on these maps that you have to one stack, if you're not a fast one stacker, you uh, might like suffer a little bit with like your success rate on these maps. So, you know, learning how to one stack quickly is really, really important. You should practice it if you want to get good at Bad Wars 1v1s. Last but not least is Dragon Star. On Dragon Star, I like to rush with 48 blocks, 16 ladders, TNT, and I low bridge. This is the only map that I actually low bridge on. And I like to low bridge to the Diamond Gen, and then from there, I one stack to their base, and usually TNT jump and ladder clutch. Other than the low bridge part at the beginning, it's generally like a very, you know, generic map. This, you know, same strategy as a uh, Hollow or a uh, glacier but uh yeah those are all my str are my strategies for most of the bedwars uh solo and doubles maps so yeah maybe you can try to you know see if those um styles work for you maybe change it a little bit or adopt them completely and you can use those strategies all right guys so now i'm going to share some advanced tips that you can use that can really help you in the game that doesn't they don't really seem that important sometimes or just, you know, like something that wouldn't occur to you but can really help you in your game and sometimes can win you the game entirely. Number one, drop your water bucket. So if you, like, let's say you have six gold, right? And like 32 iron and you buy like a stone axe because your opponent has wood. This is all theoretical, by the way. And then you buy, you know, 48 blocks, something like that, right? And then you buy um, you buy a gapple, and then you're like, hey, I, th I have three gold left over. What do I what do I use to buy with it? Buy a water bucket, and then just drop it in your spawn area. So why would you do that? Well, let's say your opponent is rushing you, right? They have TNT. They're about to TNT your bed. They drop TNT, right? What are you gonna do? You pick up the water bucket and you place it where the TNT is and the TNT is nullified completely. Now the reason you drop it and not store it in the chest is because that, you know, it being on the floor and you can like pick it up faster is sometimes the difference, like the time difference between having to go into your like chest and take it out versus just picking it up off the off the ground can be the time difference between saving your bed or your bed being broken. Tip number two, KB sticks, KB sticks, KB sticks, KB sticks. If you can buy a KB stick, buy one. They are super overpowered and you will not regret buying one. They are amazing. Tip number three, two M's can be just as good as six M's. Now, I know this seems kind of like a weird tip. Like, what do you mean two M's are equal to six M's? You know, that doesn't really make any sense. But so let's say you broke your opponent's bed, right? They went mid. They're more stacked than you. Let's say they have like iron armor and you don't have any armor. You know, same sword, stuff like that, right? And you don't want to take them because if you fight them, you're likely going to lose unless you get a combo. So you don't want to take that because if you lose that, they get all eight M's and that's very bad. So just go for one Emerald Gen that's kind of out of the way so you don't have to fight them and then go back to your base. Now that might not sound like the smartest idea, but then what you're going to do is you're going to buy Jump and Speed. Now Jump and Speed, you can basically beat anybody with, with Jump and Speed. Um, jump gives you the ability if you start losing to fight to like, you know, dip out and, you know, maybe eat a gapple and go back in and speed can let you get insane combos. Uh, speed is super underrated in Bedwars overall. Um, and you can catch up with your opponent really quickly. If you have jump and speed, uh, you can generally get back to your base 
and uh, like jump and then you know catch up to your opponent by the time that they get back to their base. Um, and even if they have more armor than you, having speed is just so good that you might just beat them entirely. Make a larger platform. So you'll notice in like ranked videos how the platforms are just huge that people PvP on. And the reason for that is let's let's make a scenario, right? Okay, so we're gonna over go over here, right? So let's say your opponent is this lovely two layer, you know, two two block tall wool, right? Right? So let's say your platform is like this, you know, something like this. So if you're your opponent, if you are your opponent that's coming at you, right? They have to attack you over here, right? And even if they get a combo on you, two hits or something, you might still be able to land or clutch here, right? You have more space to take knockback. You can basically one-tap them. If they're coming from this angle, they will be able to get one-tapped really easily. And that's the whole fundamental part of making a platform, is there's more area for you to take knockback on. Blocks behind ladders. So, you, you, might, not, you might notice this in some of my videos. You might not. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and go and take some ladders here, uh, and I'll show you what I mean by this. So let's go this. There we go. All right. All right. So let's say you're making the scorpion bridge, right? And this is, let's say this is build height. You know, your opponent's coming over. You don't know what to do. You're not as good at PVP as them. You know, you might hide here, right? But this isn't as good as it could be. You can just place a block right here. Now what are they gonna do? You see? Now there's a block behind you. So even if for some reason you take you know are off the ladder then you'll go like get hit back into this block um and you'll take basically no knockback at all it's basically impossible for you to take knockback reason i wouldn't recommend putting two blocks down there even though that will reduce your kb a little bit is because then you can't get up there again so generally what i like to do when i'm doing the scorpion bridge is i like to place one block here even when i'm not pvping somebody so that way when i come up again i can just already have the block there and i don't have to worry about taking knockback the next tip is go for a trade when you're on low HP. So if you don't understand the Bed Wars lingo, a trade is basically you and your opponent killing each other. You know, you kill your opponent and they kill you at the same time, right? That's a trade. It usually happens on a bridge when you hit each other off. So when you're on low HP, right, you know, you're like a two hearts, right? Your opponent's full health. You've killed them before, but you're really low now. Go for a, uh, go for a trade because if you think about it, as you know you're you know you're falling down like let's say you're you know your opponent is this beautiful two block tall wolf structure right you know you're doing this you're you know trying not to get killed so you just jump around and you hit them off just like that right you do that you hit them off right you, you kill them they fall but you're already falling so you're gonna have like a second past them so take advantage of that and try to like rush quicker than them because that one second or you know sometimes even two seconds that one second usually of you know not like, you know, of being up there before your opponent can be the difference sometimes. The next tip is water clutching is better than ladder clutching. So I know ladder clutching is like, you know, people are like, oh my god, ladder clutching is insane. It's so cool. But water clutching is so much better. It's, you can basically water clutch wherever. Whereas like on, with ladders, you can't like, like clutch on, it's really hard to ladder clutch on some surfaces. Like if it's like, you know, if you have like a, like a, like a jagged wall like this, I mean, you really can't ladder clutch that many places on it. It's kind of, it's kind of difficult to ladder clutch there, right? But with water clutching, it's super easy. It's just, you know, you have one block here and you're just going to water clutch right there. It's super easy. You just place it there and boom, you've water clutched. On maps that it's like, it's difficult to ladder clutch on, um, it, water clutching is a good alternative. The next tip is avoid fights when your bed is gone. So... Fights when your beta is gone, like PvP fights, is just not that good of a, an idea. Because if you lose the fight, then you lose the entire game. So even if you're confident with your PvP ability, if you get comboed once, um, it's usually over. But, um, you know, unless you're, like, really stacked. So generally try to avoid fights, but avoid fights on bridges at all costs. Because it is so easy for your opponent to just try to trade with you. Uh, you know, just jump off and try to hit you as they're falling. Um, you know, bridge fights without your bed is a really, really bad idea. Even if you're very confident in your bridge fighting and your clutching skills, just try to avoid it. It's not a good idea. 
The next tip that I have is don't invis on scorpion bridges. Let's say you're on, you know, you're you're invis, right? And you're going on the scorpion bridge. This is a long, you know, it's a it's a it's a flat bridge, right? So if your opponent is trying to find your invis or they suspect that you're invis, they're just gonna punch on the bridge, and it's so easy for them to hit you. And it was one of my mistakes that I made in um, one of my games against Purpled, uh, you know, in his video that he posted with me. Uh, I, one of the games that I, the actual, the, I think it was the last game that I, uh, I played against him. One of my mistakes was I was, in, I invised on a scorpion bridge. Um, also what kind of sucks is usually when you're invis, you like to buy jump boost as well. Jump boost on ladders does not work on high pixel. You just get la lagged back instantly and it's really, really annoying. So I would advise against it. If you try to like jump up a scorpion bridge with jump boost, it just won't work at all. So the last tip is block off your opponent's water. So let's say, you know, your opponent made a very, you know, high bridge. They water clutched to avoid taking fall damage. Uh, you know, and then you killed them after they water clutched. Hooray, right? And you're going up the bridge, right? Block off that water. Uh, now, it doesn't really seem like it might not matter, but if you die on that, on that rush, then your opponent will have the ability to use that water to take no fall damage. Um, and you don't want that. You want them to either have to buy another water and waste their resources or take that uh, or, or, or take that fall damage and that way you can kill them a lot easier. So that was Bed Wars 1v1 Tips and Tricks Part 2. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was informative in some way. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, I think the uh, tw my 20k pack will be out next. Um, so yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. It's the pack that I'm uh, pack that I'm using right now. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching so very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.